Over the past four years, I've made a bunch of bald maps, and I've also gone on a lot of hiatuses where I go several months with no maps at all. But why do these hiatuses happen? Well, for example, the reason for my 2023 hiatus was because of my current main project, Auto Blast Chapter 5, which is a big map series. Making four maps takes four times as long as one, and behind the scenes is one of the most advanced aesthetics in AMP. Put me in charge of that and you've got the perfect combination for an unending development time. Oh, and in autumn, I was actually working on a sequel to Spooky, which I unfortunately had to cancel. So, more time spent not uploading anything. But, in between the release of Portal Plus 3 and 4, there was a 7 month gap. I was not working on Chapter 4 for 7 months. I mean, look at it, does that look like 7 months? No, Chapter 4 was a few weeks. Instead, I was working on another map series. I was hoping to make my own Aperture on the Moon workshop series. Here's the story. I first had the idea whilst developing Portal Plus 3. Aperture on the moon, where you could see the surface of the moon outside the windows, and the space core watches over you, similar to Wheatley in Chapter 8. I was so enthusiastic about the idea that I naively included a teaser for the end of Chapter 3. It's since been removed, but here's a clip showing what it was. You can tell I was 14. <laughs> anyway, a few comments asked about this, and I left a big comment replying to most prior comments on the map. In that comment, I mentioned that this aft elevator scene was a teaser for a new map that wasn't Portal Plus. We'll get onto why later, but I ended up deleting that comment, and <laughs> in the process ended up making this guy look like a schizophrenic. My idea for the hows and whys of the story were this. Sometime after Portal 2, the space guard had fallen to the surface of the moon, and new supplies that flew out into space with him to start building his own moon-based aperture. It's a stretch, I know, just work with me here. You're human on a main aperture ship, I can't recall this version had any proper justification for why you were out there, so that's about as deep as this version of the lore goes. Now let's play the actual maps. Seaside Presents The Lunar Testing Initiative. We start out staring out into space, tied to a camera and able to move. Now we have to sit through a painfully long sequence. Beyond the overly bright CSGO model, we see a cube fly and hit the ship on one side. To the other, a rock flies by and hits the ship too. Then we are finally given freedom, and here is an attempt at a ship control room. From here, we have to wait for the story, but looking past the CSGO props spammed everywhere, we actually have quite a few things to do in here. Walking over to Potatoes, don't question the cannon, she has a few lines to say. In case you were wondering, yes, I'm still a potato. Go actually, staring at her triggers more speaking, God. which I was quite proud of at the time. The Adventure Sphere, for hey, some reason here, some has lines of you approach him. Dun, 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 I remember putting soap here to reference something that was uh, heavily present at the time. I don't know if I can say the word on YouTube, so just think what links soap and 2020. Yeah. And the last thing you can interact with is this disc. By inserting it into the disc player, you can play the turret song on these screens. Once enough time has passed, eventually the radio starts beeping, and something gets detected on the radar. Interacting with the radio causes this. After the explosion, you need to push the button which temporarily steals control to force you to see the door open. Did you hear that? Like something just exploded. Please prepare Man, for emergency evacuation. evacuation. This is like Christmas. You know, it's better than Christmas. This should be its own holiday. Explosion day! Pass the door, press the button, and... There's the end of the map. Now, as I'm the one who made this map, I feel no remorse in tearing it to shreds on why the visuals are fundamentally poor. 
let's get to work. First off, CSGO models, for the most part, belong in CSGO. Those models are generally much newer than Portal 2's and will feel out of place amongst the other models. If any are used, it has to be handled with care. This, this is props man. Trying to compensate for low quality visuals with high quality models. The shape of the room feels awkward and some parts feel too big, some parts feel too small. A, a colour palette of whites, beiges and browns. Mm, really? These shelves feel like a hole was cut in the wall and it was just put there. I, I, I mean, that, that is what happened, but still, it, it doesn't feel natural. Dust particles have been overused. These lights are distracting and also far too glowy. And overall, it just doesn't feel like I was leaning into any actual theme, just doing whatever. Before we continue on to the next map, I want to take a moment to mention some of the things which I like about the map, or things which I learned from making it. With the cutscene at the start, I first learned about point of view controls, and this is also the first map where I used dust particles, which I've since used many times, and despite their absence from Portal 2, I am a fan of frequently including them. The whole sequence with the disc taught me loads, learning about funk monitors, point cameras, and a big one, filters for triggers. And I think my addition of the sprites with different colour stars is actually a good idea. Although the best way to go about this may be a custom skybox, as the basic Portal 2 stars uh, are quite dull. Had this been released on the workshop in the state it's in, I feel the reviews would be extremely mixed. Oddly enough, it's rare I see visuals of this level being criticised on the workshop, although had any professional mapper played. Oh boy would they have something to say, but I do feel the shortness of the map, absurd story and forced waiting would be the main criticism points of this map. Anyway, on to the next map. Originally this was all meant to be one map, but the rendering times became too long, and that's what happens when you have a giant box with no funk fizz clusters. Okay, so, in space, explosions, cut to black. We wake up when we are beneath the wreckage of the ship. We're in what feels like an odd looking test chamber covered in the debris from the ship. <laughs> Head over here and we end up in the lift. Reaching the top, we find ourselves on the surface of the moon, with weird looking terrain. Now, that's as far as this version of the map goes, but there is one more map. But before we go there, let's talk about this map's problems. Now, this map was clearly unfinished. The ending would have included an entrance into a surface level testing track where you could see the moon's surface from outside of the windows. Of course, this isn't there, but regardless, I'll treat it as if what's there was considered mostly done. First off, lighting. This room has excellent opportunities to have awesome lighting. If the room was a naturally dark blue but had strong orange lights around all the fires, that would look brilliant. It may even be good enough to compensate for the problems I'm about to list. Big missed opportunity to have lighting, slightly orange white lighting, just everywhere is incredibly dull. Next up, include a cube map. Also, destruction, another missed opportunity. We have an opportunity for awesome curved and collapsed walls and ceilings around where the ship crashed, but I only go a fraction of the way with a couple of frames. As for the ship itself, I mean, it works. How a ship should look is incredibly vague, but it may be best to use a custom model. Obviously, insanely time consuming, but if you want the best results, that's what's required. Not related to visuals, but what is the point of this room? Prior to the ship crashing, this room served absolutely no purpose. It's not an actual desk, it's not a warehouse, it's not a factory, it's not even a hallway, it's an empty dead end. Moving on to the elevator, the shaft is bland and too long. If you want a long elevator, you need something interesting to be happening to keep you entertained the whole way. Either short or long, it should actually look good. This is bland. I could have made it look like a, like a mining shaft with cave walls on the sides, blocked off by trusses, beams, grates, rails and wiring. But sure, boring metal texture, again and again. Okay. Whilst progress had stopped on the main map series, I instead switched my focus to making a playable teaser map for the series. The idea was this, you play as another person on the same ship and experience the same events from another point of view. Let's begin. We wake up in a hotel room, incredibly similar to the one seen in Portal 2. Here we have the same radar from the other map being shown on this monitor here. If we interact with this radio, XR Vilify plays. Approaching the door and... All reactor core safeguards are now non-functional. It's revealed we're actually in space. 
Press through the halls and we end up back in the main room from the first time. The explosion causes a vent to open up, allowing us to crawl through. We progress through more halls and we end up in a strange area with a few odd boxes with doors, all with red lights except for one, the green light. These are meant to be escape pods. Opening up the green one and stepping through, we beat the map. Sprint 2021. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know the drill. Let's go through this again. Starting off with the hotel room, this, in my opinion, is far too derivative of Portal 2's intro. The shape of the room is very familiar, textures are used mostly the same, props are mostly the same, you get the idea. I think the garden isn't bad, and I like how I made it look like light was coming through a window, just by putting a bright light right where a window would be, but the lighting in this room is generally dull, it's a bit too bright and a bit too white. And another thing, the slow moving thing I did, it doesn't work. It just sort of makes the floor feel like it's slippery and I'm sliding around everywhere. The reveal that you're in space? Okay, sure, you probably wouldn't see that coming. It is revealed fairly effectively, but it may be better if the window was directly in front of the pod, or if the pod was on the other side so you basically had to look out the window in progressing the map. As for how it looks out there, I could have done a better job with the skybox as I am able to see the corners. I don't know if non-mappers are able to spot this kind of thing, but I'll point it out and you can let me know if you can see it. So how this works is we are in a box and each of the faces have got that star texture, so you need to look for the points where the faces are suddenly looking a different direction. Like you can see right here there's one face and those stars are all facing this direction, but if you look down you can see the stars, they're all facing up. And the same would go for each of the six faces here, and we look, need to look for the point where the faces change. And I can see that that's right there. There's a corner there. There's a corner there. It's a line there and corner right there, right there. Back to the main room itself, this concrete texture isn't correctly aligned with the floor. Although I imagine I was trying to get that blue line aligned to that position. Apparently I didn't think one sun was enough, so I created a second, third, and fourth one. But seriously, overuse of beam spotlights and envy sprites never look good. Nowadays I find the tone mapper to usually be enough to get the right glowy effect in the majority of situations. However, this did serve as a useful experimentation for those things which I do use these days, but usually in more careful situations. Now the lighting as a whole in this area is again quite flawed, although still probably the best so far, but the point is the lighting is still very white, except for the red spinning light. Looking at the pods themselves, this is something which I think should not be done. Trying to put an actual room in the pods and connect them with linked portal doors will give very odd results. If you want to roam in a pod like this, the best way would be a custom model, which no one is willing to do, so... Hold on, this is upside down! But, this back area here, I'd say is the best work so far. And experimenting with behind the scenes aesthetic here is what taught me many of the techniques I used to make the behind the scenes aesthetic in chapter 4. This hallway is odd, the lights are again blinding, the destruction doesn't entirely make sense, some tiles have vanished from existence, also this fire needs an orange light, textures once again not aligned but moving on. We've already talked about this room so let's move to the vent. I'd say the vent looks okay, but I'd also say vents have no place in Portal games, and quite frankly, they don't work well in Source games at all, in my opinion. They slow down the game, look boring, and are a cliché. Progressing forward, we continue to see many problems mentioned before, odd room shapes, odd lighting, etc. The pods here don't feel natural at all, and it's impossible to tell that they are escape pods. You probably didn't know until I said that they were escape pods, and I only know this because I made this! Interior of the escape pods also feel dull, and finally the whole sequence of the space core just feels awkward. <laughs> Whilst this map was being developed, my friend who does Blender made a short animation to actually tease the release of this teaser. A teaser of a teaser. He sent me over the animation, I added a weird version of the potato cement for the music, then I premiered it on my YouTube in early December, and here it is.
I swear, after this I learned my lesson, I stopped promising release dates I'm not ready for. I, I, I don't do that anymore, I have you know, I, you know, just, you just trust me, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all good now. I'm doing, and I'm currently determined to finish it for this summer. Um, let's just pretend I never said that. Anyway, when the 20th came round, that playable teaser was mostly ready. I just thought that with how things had been going, I likely wouldn't be ready for a spring release. So instead, with only a handful of views, the video was taken down, my comment deleted, and I told myself I'd continue making it after I was done with Portal Plus. After Portal Plus. Like that's ever gonna happen. Over a year and a half later, the same summer I released Paul Plus Overgrown, I still hadn't given up on this idea. I had written out a whole other version, complete with an entire backstory about an old Aperture Moon base that ended up being cut off from Earth and its crew broke into factions fighting each other until everyone was dead. The main story was also a lot more fleshed out, with other human characters who'd be on the ship and help you throughout the game. There'd be a section similar to Act 3 in Portal 2 where you had to travel through the levels of the old underground moon base and learn the history. I had plans for the old agriculture section of the facility to have been completely overgrown. I wanted a rocket that you'd try to escape in, only for it to malfunction and force you back to the facility, and it would ultimately end with the space core destroyed and you trapped on the moon. I have massively summarised it here, but if I told you everything in my old text document, we could be here all day. You've probably figured it out by now, but just to clarify, I'm only making this video because this mod is never going to be made. But what is that? Well, it started off with seeing other workshop maps that do a very similar thing, Aperture on the Moon. As far as I'm aware, none of them have much story, and during the visual work it's <clears throat> fairly standard. So there was still room if I made a particularly high quality mod, but then I started seeing people on YouTube comments or Reddit posts talking about their ideas for portal games. And a piece of me died every time I read about the space score building aperture on the moon or something similar. But until recently, I still thought I might do the mod. The final nail in the coffin, however, was Portal Revolution's after credit scene. Nigh confirming the team of professionals are going to be making, or are currently making, an Aperture on the Moon mod. Either way, the concept is very much out there, it simply wouldn't be unique enough. This map will join the council projects of mine, along with a spooky sequel, which I was going to call Too Spooky. You see what I did there? I had to cancel it as the scope was far too big for a standalone workshop map. Felt like wasting ideas. Regardless, cancelling projects allows for me to focus on other things. I have many ideas for other maps and map series which I can't wait to finish or start, depending on their state. Anyway, I'm off.